Hi, this is John Riggs, and I am here to bring to you my findings on visual impairment for children in um, upper elementary grades. Now, visual impairment is typically a broad term that's used by professionals to describe vision loss of any kind. So this would include anyone who's not really able to see at all to someone who may only have a partial loss of vision. Um, it can usually be used to describe the general consequence of an eye condition or disorder. Now some causes of impairment uh, would include um, such things as uh, amblyopia, where the vision is reduced in one eye due to the lack of the use of that eye. Uh, we usually have heard the term lazy eye to describe this condition. Now amblyopia is sometimes caused by a strabismus which is a misaligned or crossed eyes and usually what happens is the less that you use that eye that you're having trouble with um, the, le the um, less that your brain will use the signals from the eye basically it starts filtering out signals from that eye so typically a doctor would have um, the child or the person use an eye patch on their good eye so that way it forces the quote lazy eye to um, be used more and to gain strength and so that the brain will not ignore those signals. Cataracts are also a condition that would cause an eye impairment. It's um, where the lens of the eye is cloudy. Cataract symptoms would include double vision, cloudy or blurry vision, um, also difficulty seeing in poorly lit places and colors that would seem faded. Diabetic retinop retinopathy is another condition. Um, this is when small blood vessels in the retina become damaged because of diabetes. Now the condition usually appears over time and uh, people with diabetes are encouraged to undergo regular eye exams. Also as well as uh, the general uh, housekeeping issues with diabetes such as keeping the blood pressure and blood sugar at um, optimal level levels. <clears throat> Glaucoma um, which is increased pressure inside the eye can also cause visual impairment. Uh, the increase in pressure damages the optic nerve which um, impairs vision. Uh, another common condition that causes impairment would also be macular degeneration. It's a progressive um, and gradual deterioration of the sensitive part of the retina which is called the macula. Now visual impairment is, is very common uh, most of us are familiar with the terms that describe um, someone's eyesight, as, such as nearsighted or farsighted. Um, so a lot of people have some sort of impairment. Uh, the conditions that I just talked about are just a few of the most common types. Now visual impairment does not limit itself to any particular race, color, gender, creed. The conditions that surround a person's impairment can be just as diverse as the person with a visual impairment. Um, behavioral characteristics of someone with a visual impairment, especially in children. Uh, children with visual impairment may exhibit behavioral behaviors associated with difficulties performing everyday tasks. So some of these tasks, um, such as walking, or watching TV or putting on clothes, children with a visual impairment may experience a difficulty in walking, maybe stumbling around or, or you might see them just very carefully maybe feeling their way around. Uh, sitting too close to the TV, that would be a good indication that there's a visual impairment or some sort of uh, condition causing an impairment. Uh, maybe wearing clothes that are mismatched, um, children may exp uh, experience spatial unawareness Maybe running into walls, bumping into things. Uh, challenges with reading or writing. Um, if you have an impairment, it's going to obviously be very difficult to um, write well or to read well. And some children with an impairment um, may have a dislike for reading. And it, it may be just because they're not able to see the, the, um, the book for, or, the, or the words on the pages very well. Um, with, with some... Um, with uh, visual therapy or, or corrective issues or a corrective um, um, methods, children may actually end up loving reading. <clears throat> Physical characteristics 
um, would include pupils that may be unequal in size, uh, crossed eyes or eyes that turn outward, maybe eyes that flutter from side to side or up and down, eyes that don't seem to focus. Um, also, a child who repeatedly shuts or covers one eye or maybe squints, blinks, or even a lot of eye rubbing or rubbing his or her eyes, they may be exhibiting some sort of sign of uh, an impairment. <clears throat> so those would be some physical characteristics that you might um, notice in children with an impairment that's gone undiagnosed. As far as intellectual characteristics, uh, learning activities at school can oftentimes be challenging for children with visual impairment. I've already talked about reading and writing. Now, in many cases, learning uh, problems is as a result of poor vision and not really due to learning disability. So that's in, in a lot of cases. Now that's not, that's not to say that every case is exactly like that. There are sometimes maybe other learning um, disabilities at play, but many times uh, poor vision is the, uh, the result for uh, maybe poor grades or um, a dislike for school. <clears throat> now children with visual impairments, yeah, I already said difficult to read and write well, and sometimes they have difficulty remembering things that they have read or, or maybe some of the activities that they've learned in school. They may have a difficulty or a difficult time remembering those things because we rely on a lot of visual input in order to help us encode things in our mind or to help remember those things. <clears throat> now children who have visual impairments may sometimes find it difficult to form meaningful relationships. So here are some social emotional characteristics for children with visual impairments. Now this might be the case because it's difficult to observe nonverbal cues that are typical when we communicate with other people such as body language or facial expressions. Some children may experience anxiety or a loss of motivation. Uh, they don't, maybe don't want to interact with other children or they're kind of afraid of group settings because it's very difficult to, to read those nonverbal cues. Some children are self-conscious and experience um, an increased dependency on others and that you will see especially with adults because adults usually are um, a safe person or safe people that children know they can interact with. Now children with visual impairments can oftentimes become frustrated, maybe even uncooperative, and that may lead to negative behaviors or acting out as a way to cope with the disability. So those are some of the um, characteristics you might see that are more social and emotional. <clears throat> now as far as communication characteristics, uh, much of what children learn typically occurs visually. There's a lot of visual input that um, a lot of times those of us who are fully sighted take for granted. Vision loss that goes undetected in children may result in a delay in developing a wide range of skills. So with vision loss you may see um, in children that they have a smaller or more narrow range of skills because they're missing out on that visual input that would help them or they're missing out on some of these experiences that require visual input in order to develop a wider range of skills. Some of these skills that are affected may include expressive language because communication is often dependent on visual input especially during a crucial foundation period which typically is between birth to three years of age. So as a result some children will experience a delay in the acquisition of language skills. <clears throat> so as a parent, what can you do? What can you do to help foster development or promote development for your child who may have a visual impairment? Well, some I, or one activity for literacy and language, uh, because I have already said that children with visual impairment may become disinterested in developing language skills, um, especially when they're only prevent, presented in a format that includes reading text on a page. Uh, to help your child develop language skills at home, one activity that you may do is to use index cards and puffy paint to spell out words on the index cards with that puffy paint or strips of cardstock type paper. You want a thicker paper to use. You can. Uh, this is especially helpful when you are 
working with vocabulary words or maybe even spelling words, you can spell out the words with the puffy paint on the index card. Then let the paint dry. And once it's dried, your child can trace the raised letters of that puffy paint and you can guide him or her in sounding out the word as they go. That way they're learning word sounds um, as well as the formation of the letters using that puffy paint. <coughs> For math, sometimes math can be a little more difficult uh, simply because a lot of math is paper, pencil, uh, methods that require uh, reading skills and to know the formation of the numbers and letters. Well, a lot of times you'll see children with visual um, impairments enjoy more hands-on activities. So you can try the following activity at home using items that you probably already have in your kitchen. You can use toothpicks or even pretzel sticks and marshmallows like the small marshmallows. You can ask your child to build uh, three-dimensional objects such as a cube. So you can describe the cube to your child um, including the number of sides that maybe that, that shape or object would have and then let him build it based on your description. You can even um, have your child invite friends to do this activity as well. Now after building each three-dimensional shape they can each trade their shapes with a friend and then feel the difference in each person's constructed shape. And I imagine you can see lots of giggles and it would be kind of fun um, especially if someone's <laughs> shape turns out to be a little bit different but it's very tactile and, and provides the opportunity for the child to form an image in their mind based on what they're feeling. A social emotional activity, um, we've got sometimes there are issues um, interacting with other people simply because um, missing out on those visual cues um, or those nonverbal cues. Um, so interacting with peers can kind of seem scary. Uh, this activity for social emotional encourages children to show their individuality and help to build each other up with positive words in a safe setting. Now most children in the upper elementary grade levels um, and even above that have some sort of mobile device such as an iPod or some sort of <clears throat> um, cell phone. Um, usually they have their own pictures and music and videos that represent what they like in their personal style. In this activity, um, your child may have some friends over, and you can invite them um, to do what's called mobile sharing. Have each child find a photo or a song or a video on their mobile device that, of something that best represents them. Now each person would then share with the group his or her media and why it best represents them. They can even pass the devices around for others to look at. Now for, um, for your child who may have a visual impairment, you can use a webcam to project the image onto a larger screen for everyone to see. Now for music, you can attach the device to a set of portable speakers so everyone can listen to the song. Although this activity will likely invite discussion and giggles, at the end of the activity you can encourage each person to offer positive comments with um, I really like Jason's picture because that looks like a fun activity to do. Or I really liked um, Jessica's song because I think it really sounds like that describes her really well or that sounds like something that she would like. Or it's a really cool song. Something that would affirm the other person. So this would be a great activity to do to help build um, build up each child and help to make social situations seem a little bit less scary. Sensory. Sensory um, activities are fantastic for children with um, visual impairments. Um, one uh, material that I like to use is sand. It, it provides lots of sensory input. Now for this activity <clears throat> you'll need a sock, a cup, um, some small toys or coins or marbles and um, sand. So you would uh, take the plastic cup, kind of like a solo cup. That probably would be a good cup to use. You'll fill the cup, um, well you'll put several small objects in the cup and then you'll fill it one half to two thirds full with sand. 
Next, you'll place the cup in the foot of the sock. Have your child reach in through the sock and into the cup to grasp an object with her fingers. Now, before pulling the object out, ask her to describe the object. This sensory activity is great for encouraging the practice of using descriptive words. <clears throat> Next up is community resources. Um, in my area, in the Leavenworth County area, there is the Children's Center for the Visually Impaired in Kansas City, Missouri, and they offer a lot of resources for families um, with individuals with visual impairments. And the Sca uh, Kansas State School for the Blind in Kansas City, Kansas also offers a lot of resources. Online you can check out Perkins Scout. It's an online database for resources with um, individuals for individuals with visual impairment. Each of the resources has been vetted, meaning it's been carefully reviewed. A great book that I found online has, is called Children with Visual Impairments, A Guide for Parents. Now, this book is really cool because it's been written by a team of experts. It offers up-to-date information. Um, it offers a compassionate view of, chil of children with visual impairments. Lots of advice on many, many, many different topics, ranging from day-to-day -day activities, mobility, uh, educational needs, assistive technology. Um, overall, I think it's a really good book to check out. Well, this has been my presentation, and I thank you for um, joining me for the ride here.